Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create a pyramid chart like this. In most cases, if you had your choice, you probably shouldn't use a pyramid chart because it skews the data uh, visually. Uh, it's probably not recommended. So if someone is actually influencing you or forcing you to create one, uh, like your boss, um, there's some things that you need to consider. First is you probably don't want too many series of data because as you move up the pyramid it gets a little bit more skewed and it's harder to make comparisons. In addition, you probably want to try to avoid you know, using data that varies so widely uh, such as this. I, I mean this is probably used for illustrative purposes. We've got uh, about 3 billion here and 29 million here and so when you really look at this data, I mean, there's really a wide gap here. But when you think about the proportion of size, that's really not proportional of size. I mean, so there's a lot of misleading things about pyramid charts. But if you have to use it, just remember that it may be a little bit misleading. So you try to make it the best you can. So when you're doing pyramid charts, let me go and show you this example that I've done that tries to mirror mirror this particular example. So what happens is with the labels and such you probably have to do a little bit of adjustment to do that. So I've got a, a table here that represents the data that we saw in the earlier pyramid chart. But I also have a smaller table here that puts together the percentages and uh, the actual amounts. You notice when you have the pyramid chart it doesn't calculate percentages like a pie chart so we'll have to do some adjustments to take care of that. So let's show you how to do this particular chart. Now what I'm going to do is take this table, uh, control C to copy, and then control V to paste over here. Let me go ahead and double click this to make it into size. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Let me go ahead and uh, let me put a little carriage return here. That was the Alt Enter. And let me go and double click this to adjust that. And so now we've got a little bit more room here to put our table or excuse me, put our pyramid chart. So I can just select anywhere in this table and go into insert and the pyramid chart is under the column chart. So it's right here. So there's a couple pyramid charts. There's, there could be a cluster pyramid which makes a bunch of pyramids. There's is stack pyramid basically stacks it up and then there's this 100% stack which is the one we want. So when I click on that it's not the chart exactly what we want but it is a stack chart. So the one difference is we want to switch these. We don't, we don't want the, the population as a series and we want it as the uh, axis. We don't want these, these particular areas, these rows. These are supposed to be our series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on switch row and column. So what it's going to do, it's going to make it one pyramid. Now I've got the data here. So also what I forgot to mention earlier is it's, it's best to make sure that your data is in some kind of ascending or descending order here so it looks like the bottom one as the most as it go, just goes down here it decreases but in the chart itself as it goes up it decreases so it's kind of in the inverse so what I'm going to do now is I, I don't need this legend so I'm going to click that and press delete and you notice that with the pyramid chart it gives this 3D effect and the 3D effect also gives skews the, the visual aspect of the data a little bit more too. So in order to get that triangle effect, that just flat triangle effect, we're going to have to adjust some of the 3D. It's not really apparent that you click in the chart area. Uh, there's a lot of different areas in the this particular chart. You can see that I've clicked a couple places and it's highlighted some. So to make sure that you clicked in the chart area, you can actually go to the layout here and when I click in this area, this is the plot area. If I click the tr this outside line, we're in the chart area. And I want to bring up the dialog box, the format dialog box. I can just press Control 1. It's going to bring up the format chart area. And what I want to do is I want to go into 3D rotation. You also notice that it's also here. There's 3D rotation here. So if I click on, let me go ahead and close that. And you can see that there's different ways that we can bring that up. If I click on that, it's going to bring up the same thing. It'll bring up this uh, format chart area, but it also takes me to that 3D rotation there. So depending on how you want to do it, I mean, it's up to you. There's different ways to get to this window. And what I want to do is I want to change the rotation. The X, X rotation, that moves it from, well, from side to side like this big circle. So you notice that these icons tell you that. So let's just give you an example of what I mean. So if I 
click it and increase the degree, you'll see that it kind of rotates on its side. You want to have that extra zero, so it's kind of like facing you. Now the y-axis, this is moving it up and down, and uh, I'll show you what that what it does. You can see it. We're, we got like kind of like a bird's eye view here, and this is a view. If I go negative, it looks like I'm looking at the bottom. I'm right under it. Well, we also want this as zero. So right now, it's kind of got a flat plane. Now. There's one area here in the chart scale which we might want to change, and that's the height, the percentage of the base. So we want to make, make this a little bit flatter sometimes. Uh, it's up to, actually up to you, um, but I like to make it a little bit flatter. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease the height of the base. And so maybe, maybe 40 is good. So make it a little bit flatter there. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click close. And I've kind of got my beginnings of the flat pyramid. I don't need these lines, so I'm going to go and click those and press delete. And now I have to start to put the labels on. So once I click in here, it selected this particular series of data. I'm going to right click and add data labels. And you can see that it's added this data label here. I don't want that. I'm going to, I'm going to change that. I want actually this criteria here. Because if you notice, if I right click this and go under format data labels, it's going to bring up only these particular options. I can either add the value. Let me go ahead and bring it over here. I can either add the value or the category name, which is population in millions, which I don't really need, or the series name here, which is this basically the name of the series here. That's what we want. But it doesn't have percentage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have the series name and bring it out there. So I'm going to unselect value. And I don't need to I don't need to close this since I can just select another part of the chart and start adding the labels. I'm going to go right click that and also add data labels and also in the top here right click add data label. Now you notice that I can't really see the last one this 29 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here as long as you're in layout or format I'm going to go up here to the current selection and select the one that says series over a million and now I can see that it's kind of selected it. You see that little circle there? It's selected it and so I can just right click and add data labels and now it's added at 29 in there. Now I'm going to go into each one of these and adjust the uh, label option. So I'm going to click series name and then on, on that one I'll do series name and then oh the 344. It's hard to click in there so I'm just, I'm just going to go up here and this is the 100,000 to 1 million so I'm going to select that. That's the data label. Right, and now I'm just going to click series name and unselect value. So now I'm going to click close and I'm starting to move these out. And this one I'm going to move over here. This one I'm going to move out here. Let's move this over here. And this one, actually, this one should be on top. And whoops, this one is on top here. And this one over here. Whoops. Let me control Z to undo. Let me move this, move this one again. Now these, the font size is a little big, so I'm going to go ahead and decrease the font size. I'm going to click each one, right click, and my mini toolbar shows up, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce that to seven is good. Maybe here, right click, reduce it to seven, right click here, and reduce it to seven, and right click here, and reduce that to seven. All right. So this is kind of. Let me go ahead and move these adjusting so they kind of fit in the middle here and this one kind of fits in the middle here this one will be a little bit over here and this one I can pull this far out that's fine so how do we get this data well I'm gonna go ahead and copy this table and I'm gonna explain there's a formula here but let me go ahead and copy this and then I'm gonna explain it in this sheet here so once I copied it over this uh, this particular cell references. Let's see if it references it correctly. So, what I'm going to do? Let's see. This reference is B2. That's right. And then this one is B3, B4, and B5. All right. So, what does this formula mean? Basically, it's concatenating. It's 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 combining or joining a couple cells together or some things together. So basically, it's joining B2, which is this cell and it's joining a comma which is that comma down there and this formula here so what this formula does is inside it's taking b2 over the sum of b2 to b5 so it's summing this up 
and it's doing 3184, which is B2 divided by the total. So that gives us a percentage. But what it does is it gives us a percentage in decimal. And we want to have it in a percentage format. So this text command is taking that 0.69 and making it into a percentage. So let's see how actually it works. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the formula evaluator, Alt T U F. It brings up the formula evaluator. And what it's doing, let me go ahead and evaluate the formula. As it's doing that, it's going to go through calculating the arguments in the formula. So it's looking at B2 first. It's going to evaluate that. It's going to bring back 3814. And then it's going to go into the next command here, or the argument text 3184. So that was B2. So it turned into 3184. And then it's going to sum up that this range here and bring it to 4592. And then it's going to divide it. It gives us 0.69 with a bunch of other numbers. And then this text command is to come into effect and turn it into a percentage. Now you see that happening, 69%. And then the final formula, the final output is 3184.69. So this is basically what this formula is doing. Let me go ahead and close that. So how do I get this over here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a text box. So go to insert and go into text box and bring it over here, just anywhere for now. and I'm going to have it reference this cell. So to have it reference that cell, I'm going to go up to the formula bar here and put equal and then this cell here. So it's going to reference B9. Press enter and you'll see that only a part of it shows up because there's not enough room. So what I'm going to do is right click and reduce that size to 7. And then I'm going to bring this out a little bit. But you'll notice that it also, I'm going to move it up here, you also notice that it's now a white color fill and the line color is a little bit grayish or bluish. I don't want that. I just want it to be transparent. So I'm going to right click that and under the fill, shape fill, no fill, and under the line options, no outline. So I'm going to have to do that with the other ones and I can just press, select that and press control D. It will just duplicate that and I'm going to bring this one up here. And instead of B9, I want to call B10. So I'm going to just go up here to the formula bar, delete that and put 10 press enter. You'll notice that a lot of all the formatting disappeared. So what I can do is I can just right click that and change it again. You notice it says 7, but once I click, the increased font size is going to bring it back up. So I'm going to bring back that to 7. And I, it just, I think it did keep the shape fill and the shape outline settings, so I don't have to change that. It just changed the formatting. Now I just press Control D to duplicate it. Bring this over here and have this one reference B11. Press enter. You notice that the font size changed again. Let me go right click that, bring up the toolbar, mini toolbar, and reduce the size here and kind of move it into place here. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe move this a little down a little bit. And let's see, and move this. And then do a control D. And this one will go over here next to this guy. Let me move him a little bit over here, over here. And then this is going to be. B12, B12, whoops, not 112, B12, 12. Okay, and then right click mini toolbar and reduce that size. Right? And to make this a little bit more apparent that this is pointing to this very small top, I'm going to put a arrow, a line arrow here. So I'm going to select this curvy one. This is the curved arrow connector. And I'm just going to bring this over here. And once I do that, I can I can just change the direction here. Whoops. So you just have to fiddle around a little bit. This one goes over here. This one goes over here. Let's see. Let's see how this works. So you just probably have to play around with this a little bit. And I don't really like that arrow, the way that it looks. So I'm going to right click that and go under format shape and the end type I'm going to give it the arrow type instead of this open arrow. And I'm also going to give the line color a, oops not a gradient, a solid gray. Let me see this gray is probably good enough. Close that. Yeah, now it's pointing to the top. Now this axis I don't want I don't want that particular text. I'm just going to go delete. I'm just going to actually go under layout Axis title, vertical axis title, or is a horizontal axis axis title. I delete this one, 
And in that one, I select that. And I think this one was world population or the, what was this one called? Number of adults and percentage of world population. Okay, so basically I'm just going to change number of adults and percentage of pop. All right, press, press enter, and then I've got my access here, my access label here. So this is how you would create a pyramid chart. You, see, you notice that there was quite a bit of work we had to do to take it from the 3D format to something that's a little more flat and a little bit more like this particular chart. So if you had to create a pyramid chart, this is how you would do it and some of the things that you need to consider. Also, if we want, didn't want to have this percentage, we can delete that. Go ahead and delete that. And maybe if we don't need this particular line, we can get rid of that too. So I've adjusted it a little bit here. I think some of the things went kind of askew because I deleted that axis. So what I need to do is press Control and then select, select, and move this all a little bit uh, to the right here. Well, maybe a little bit more to the left, or maybe just in each individual one. So you notice that there's a lot of like little uh, changes that, or little formatting fixes that you have to do if you want to create something like this. Uh, if you didn't want this line here, I can just select that. This is the floor. And if it's hard to select, you can actually go and lay out and go and click on floor. And it's going to select that and just press delete. And it'll get rid of that. So here's the final output of our pyramid chart. So if you really had to create this, this is how you'd do it. Um, but I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.